Hello everyone, my name is Gunveil Coldwind and welcome to my first ever English podcast, as well as the first episode of CTF series. Today I'll present one of the ways to solve the Pinaflon 400 task, also known as HackMe, from the Olympic CTF Sochi 2014. The task is basically a ZX Spectrum CrackMe, and you have already seen a glimpse of it at the very beginning of this video. We basically were given a tab file called hackme.tab and according to the file command it was a spectrum data file containing a program written in BASIC. The first step was to decompile it to a readable form and to do that we used a program called ZX Editor created by a gentleman called Klaus Jan. Check the video's description for a link. Now about the BASIC program, as you can see it's quite short. The last two lines is the important part. At line 20 there is a load command which loads whatever is next on the tape to RAM memory. The destination address is 24576 which is basically 6000 in hexadecimal. The last line is a call into whatever machine code was just loaded from the tape. So I guess we need to take a deeper look into what exactly this loader loads. Let's start by taking a look at the tab file format. As we can see, the file is basically a set of tracks, so we can create a Python script to extract them. At the very beginning, the script reads the whole hackme.tab file into a string. The next part is done for every track in the file until we reach the end of the file. For each track, we start by reading the 2-byte header which contains the length of track data following the header. And then we extract the track data and write it to a file named dump underscore track offset dot bin. At the end of the loop we print out the offset of the track header because why not, and move forward to the next track. Let's see if it works. It seems that it does. The largest file, dump 4bin is the thing we are looking for. Let's load it into IDA. To do that, we need to set the Z80 processor, as well as provide some other parameters. In my case, I created a single large RAM section and set the loading address of the input file to 6000 hexadecimal. I've also set the file offset to 1, since it seems that there is a stray byte at the beginning, which we need to get rid of. AIDA successfully loaded the file and after jumping to address 6000, we could disassemble the code. The code that greeted us was of course Z80 assembly, so we started by looking for a decent instruction set reference. In our case, we ended up using the Z80 family CPU user manual. Analyzing the code, the first thing we spotted was the LDIR instruction. It stands for load, iterate, repeat, and it's basically a mem copy. So it seems that the code copies parts of itself to different addresses and we somehow have to deal with that. There are basically two ways we can go. Either we write some script which performs the copies so they are visible in IDA, or we change our approach and try to get a dump of memory after all the copies were already performed. We went for the latter option. I've loaded and run the tab file in ZX Spin, my emulator of choice. Let it run for a while and entered some letters as the password. After that, I've entered into ZX Spin debugger and selected save binary option in the menu. Of course, what we need is to dump the whole memory so the start address is 0 and the length is 64 kilobytes or 10,000 in hexadecimal. Let's look in the memory dump for the password I've entered. And here it is. The address is 810B. It's time to load the memory dump into IDA. Again we have to set the Z80 CPU and create just one big RAM section, but apart from that this time we don't have to set up anything else. Finally we can jump into the analysis part and try to understand the application. 
The next few minutes of the video will have a rather fast pace, so before we start, here are some key points to have in mind. First of all, we will try to increase the automatic analysis coverage for IDA. To do this, we will run the application and break at random points, and then return from whatever functions we end up in. This can be done by using the exit function button in ZXSpins Debugger. When we think we are close to the top of the call stack or spot something interesting, we will look for the beginning of the function that we are in and feed its address to the IDA. The second method will be to basically look around for anything that looks like a beginning of a function and feed that to IDA. The second focus point will be trying to determine what part of the code uses the password we found in memory. Ideally, we are looking for some kind of a hash function, a decryption key derivation function, a decryption function itself, or any other transformations done on the password. Okay, let's do this. This is the first thing that looks interesting. Some calls one next to the other. This might be some kind of a main loop or close to that. Okay, so address 8000 is going to IDA. It seems some cross-references to our password appeared. Let's look into it. It looks like it's validating keystrokes and saving them as the password characters into memory. What we need is to find whatever uses the saved password. Now this looks interesting. We randomly found a function which reads the password. Two loops and some XORs. This totally looks like a hashing function. Let's put a breakpoint after the hash calculation and see what happens. So it ran for a while and the breakpoint hit. Hmm. Aha, so after the hash is calculated, it's probably used to do a line-by-line -line decryption of some bitmap. So our flag is most likely in an encrypted bitmap and the 16-bit hash in HL register is the decryption key. 
we're finally getting somewhere. Let's change the HL register and see how the output changes. The top output was for HL equal to 0 and the bottom one is for HL equal to 1. Clearly they differ a lot. Let's create two memory dumps and try to find the place in memory where this output bitmap is stored. Let's compare the dumps. We're looking for a rather big differing block with lots of entropy. This is probably it. The FFs might be a white line and the rest is the decrypted bitmap, one bit per pixel. Let's create a Python script that renders this to the console. The script basically opens the memory dump, reads about 272 bytes from the address we found, converts them to binary representation and changes zeros to spaces and ones to x's, and then prints it, 8 bytes or 64 pixels per line. Let's test it. As you can see, it works. Let's sum up what we are missing and what we have so far. First of all, we don't know anything about the nature of encryption, nor have we found the encrypted data itself. However, we do know where the hash calculating function is. We know the hash is used to decrypt the data and display it as a bitmap, and we can extract the output data from memory and display it as an image as well. Actually, this should be enough to solve the task. Here's what we're going to do. Let's grab a Z80 emulator which we can instrument. Then we can load the most recent memory dump into its memory and initialize its registers by whatever was the state at the breakpoint just after the hash was calculated, but with our desired hash value in the HL register. And then we let it run for a while until the end of the function. At that point we can extract the output bitmap from the memory and save it as an ASCII image to a file. And we can do all of this for every value of a 16-bit hash. This should give us about uh, 65,000 images and the flag will have to be among them. As far as the Z80 emulator goes, I'm going to use PYZX80, which turned out to be almost exactly what we need. Let's go through the code I've written. We've already talked about this function, so let's skip it. 
The mem map class is basically the ZX memory container. It's pre-initialized with our memory dump. Apart from that, it's basically a wrapper on an array. The IO class is required to exist, but it doesn't have to do anything. When I initialize the memory and IO classes on the CPU itself, I also open a file to dump all the images. Then the CPU is filled with the content of the registers, as read from the ZX spin debugger after our last breakpoint. The HL register is initialized to our hash value, and the CPU is run one instruction at a time, until it reaches the end of the function. After that I extract the memory, decode it to ASCII image and write that to the file. There is also a break at the end, it's only for debugging purposes, to break after one hash calculation to check if everything is ok. And that's about it. Let's see if it works. And sadly it doesn't. It seems some instruction is not implemented, so we'll have to handle that as well. The patch turned out to be quite simple and only a few instructions were missing. Let's see if it works now. And it seems to work. Please note that I'm using PyPy instead of vanilla Python. PyPy is a state-of-art JIT compiler for Python and it's a lot faster than the vanilla version. Nonetheless, it takes about two hours for the brute force to finish. When I was solving this task during the CTF, it was, well, 4 a.m. in the morning, so after running the brute force I just went to grab some sleep. After waking up I was presented with a 150 megabyte file with all the images. Let's take a look. Okay, so we have thousands of images, right? How do we find the right one? It's actually quite easy. If it's a proper image, it will probably have a large chunk of background. So let's just search for that. For example, let's search for 20 spaces. The search takes a few seconds, but there we have it, our flag. Congratulations! The key is CTF curly bracket A394F49 and so on. Our job here is done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. This is Gunveil Coldwind signing off.